8.6 Solve Rational Equations If you need a little bit of help understanding today's comic, you might remember back to chapter 1 when we were doing inequalities and we saw this comic and we solved it and we got I love you. So we're going to start off with a key term, cross multiplying, which says that a over b equals c over d means that a times d equals c times b. Now, I must admit that I kind of hate the term cross multiplying because people always mess it up because they don't understand what it means. What we're really doing here is this, a over b equals c over d. We want to get rid of fractions. In order to get rid of the b, we need to multiply both sides by b. But in order to get rid of the d, we need to multiply both sides by d. So we multiply both sides by this bd. Well, when we multiply this side, the b's cancel out. And when we multiply this side, the d's cancel out, leaving us with ad equals cb. And that's why cross multiplication is cross multiplication. I really would rather you think about it like this because you'll see that then all of our end problems work the same way as our beginning problems in this section. If you think about it like this, you're going to think that you have to remember two different things. So I really rather you think about it like this. That's why cross multiplication works. That's why it is what it is. So in this problem here, we're going to first examine both sides. Uh, we can't break down x minus 2, but we can break down this 2x minus 10 into 2 times x minus 5. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by the x minus 2 and the 2x minus 5. Unfortunately, there wasn't anything in common in either of those. So the x minus 2 cancels out with the x minus 2 on that side. Here, the 2's cancel out, as do the x minus 5's. So I'm left with the 2 times 7, 14 times the x minus 5 equals 11 times x minus 2. Multiply it out, 14x minus 70 equals 11x minus 22. Scoot the x's over here, 3x, scoot the 70 over there, we get 48. Divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 16. We do want to check all these answers just to make sure that they are within our domain. In other words, that the bottom doesn't become 0 if x is 16. So good to go over here. 2 times 16 minus 10 is not 0, so we're good to go with that answer. In this problem here, we need to multiply by an x. We need to multiply by a 5. And the x is already covered. So we'll multiply each of these terms by the 5x. So the x's cancel out there, the 5's cancel out there, and the x's cancel out there. So we're left with 5 times 15 plus 4x equals 7 times 5. In other words, 75 plus 4x is equal to 35. 4x equals negative 40, x equals negative 10. Go back and just make sure that the denominator is never 0, never is in this case, so x equals negative 10 is our final answer. Let's look over here. Let's put 1 over 1 so they all look like fractions. So we need an x plus 7 from here. We don't need the 1. And we also need this x. So we have to do that to each term. We do it to this one, to this one, and to this one. See, I have three terms, so I need to do it to each of them. So the x plus 7's cross out there. Obviously, nothing crosses out there, and the x's cross out there. So we have 12x equals x times x plus 7 minus 12 times x plus 7. Don't forget your parentheses because we need to distribute that negative 12. So we get 12x equals x squared plus 7x minus 12x minus 84. Let's just put everything over on one side. 0 equals x squared. Let's see, 7 minus 12 minus another 12 is going to be minus 17x minus 84. And then let's factor this down. x and x. What is 84? Um, 21 and 4? 
Yeah, that's going to work. So we have minus 21 and plus 4. So we get x minus 21 equals 0 or x plus 4 equals 0. Don't forget, we must set it equal to 0 before we factor this down and set each of the terms equal to 0. Always, always, always. Because only when we have something times something equals 0 can we do this. x equals 21 or x equals negative 4. Just make sure that we don't have a 0 in the bottom. Not a zero on the bottom, not a zero on the bottom, not a zero on the bottom. Therefore, both answers should work. In this problem here, I'm just going to rewrite it for a second because I see that I can factor this x squared minus 1 down into x plus 1 times x minus 1. And that's going to certainly help me when doing this problem. What I need to multiply through by on each side, I need the x minus 1, but I also need this x plus 1. So I'll do that to this one, and I'll do that to this one. Now these cancel out, nothing cancels out here, and everything cancels out there, leaving us with 7 times x plus 1 minus 5 times, and since I need to multiply everything out, I know that the x minus 1 times x plus 1 was just x squared minus 1, so I'm just going to write that there, just foiled that out, equals 6. So I distribute the 7, and I distribute the negative 5. Scoot everything over to the, let's scoot everything over to the right so I get a positive with the x squared. I like to always keep that x squared term positive. 5x squared minus 7x minus 6. Factor 5x and x. Let's see, we need a 3 and a 2. That gives us a 10 and a 3, so that'll work, minus 10 plus 3. So we have 5x plus 3 equals 0, and we have x minus 2 equals 0. We get x equals negative, or x equals 2. Let's check for extraneous solutions. Well, the negative 3 halves does not give us a 0 in the bottom. The 2 also does not give us a 0 in the bottom. You can check them, but they both work. You really want to go back and always check that neither of them gives you zero in the denominator, though. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.